Sarah and it's part two of the March art journal page. I'm working on um, a little piece that I was inspired by this picture frame and that's Maya, my granddaughter. It has a dragonfly, a snail that I love, and some flowers, a little ladybug, and a butterfly. So I took that and I decided to do a mixed media page for spring, which I'm looking at snow right now, but it is right around the corner. So I've taken this, um, I figured I, I wanted to create my little characters with a uh, collage. So I've done the whole thing. If you watch part one, we collage the background with papers that I recycled from envelopes. Inside of envelopes I had some blue and I had some green. Collage that all down and then I've just cut out pieces of my focal images from this which it's like a music page, uh, a music book. And um, so I just took and actually when I was drawing them I realized I wanted to get some of these little clefts in there so at first I just drew out a few, but if you look, you'll see, like there, I got a cleft on the snail. I really liked my dragonfly, so I just I just used where wherever he went. But when I glued him down, I made sure that the lines were going straight. Uh, but I got a couple of those. I think they're called cleft. That's not a cleft. It's a it's something else. You guys, you music people know what that's called. It's not called a cleft, a treble cleft, maybe it is, but I have a couple of them. So I just, just, you know, I thought about that when I was drawing them. So I'm going to do a little, you know, I'll draw what I drew on my little sketch pad here to get our focal images. So basically I was using the, my picture frame as inspiration, but then I also have a stamp and I used this little snail from this other stamp that I had happened to see stamped on here and I just loved him so I kind of recreated that and all I did to do that was just start by making a little snail shell and then he has like a tail and a body so you just come up Give him a little head and he has antennas and a smile. So, and you can tweak it to your liking, but basically that's a little snail, right? My shell turned out a little bigger last time. I mean, it can be as big as you want. This is a real whimsical piece. The flowers, I did the same way, very whimsically. I don't, I'm not worrying about um, having all the petals the same size. So I even tried to make some of them wonky looking. And I did about seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Um, supposedly odd numbers work best too. Um, but I only have two. I only have a snail and a dragonfly, but I think I am gonna put one of these little ladybugs on there. I just happen to have this stamp. I think I got it from Michael's in the dollar bin. And so I may glue one of those down to give me my third image. Um, what else? So for the dragonfly, I used a combination. This one is super whimsical. So if you want to keep it simple, you're just going to make two big eyeballs and a body and then wings. I mean, that's kind of what this one looks. This one is a little more elaborate. It has a head and eyeballs on the side and then the body has a body and tail pieces. So you can get as detailed or as keep it as simple as you want and mine was kind of a cross between the two of them. I did a head, a body, and then a tail that kind of went like that. And I think when I paint it, I'll add little, you know, things to it. And then I like a little more of a structured wing. So I kind of came down and went up to create the bottom wing. So not as, um, so I rounded all these corners and round everything off. And then the top wing is just kind of like that. Just to make it a little less butterfly looking and a little more dragonfly looking. I just did this, gave him little elbows on his bottom wing. And then of course he's gonna have antenna. 
Um, so that's how I drew him. Now you want to make sure, that's why I kind of did it on the sketchbook to give me the, remember you're putting it on only a six by what, nine piece of paper. So you want to have it proportionate, you know, or you could just make a huge dragonfly. I mean, that's the thing. Now's where it comes into your own personal preference. All right. And I just glued, I'm going to also put, um, leaves and you know this is uh, kind of like I did put a background of sky and a background of green and it depends how you're looking at something but um, for my whimsical way I wanted it to just like I'll have these flowers are kind of poking through like you're looking at it through a closed lens you know what I mean so it's you know this little guy would not be that big obviously so we're down on the ground looking up at <laughs> you know and my I grabbed this from the Tim Holtz chit chat and it says it's the little things that make life big and I just thought that really was a good sentiment to use and I didn't think about that beforehand so I might have a hard time placing it but I might just put it right there kind of right at the top here above my dragonfly. I haven't adhered that down yet because I didn't know. Maybe I want to put it down in the grass. I'm not sure. So that was my sentiment that I ended up going with. So I'm ready to paint. So all you want to do is you want to go ahead and now I wanted to use this paper. I ended up choosing this just FYI because I wanted it white. I didn't want it antique looking like a lot of my um, here, this is what I pulled that I was going to cut my pieces from. It was kind of the, um, it was all antique looking. So actually these book pages would have probably worked fine. This is from a book of mine. But a lot of these antique um, dictionary pages, which I love, I just wasn't, I don't, it didn't turn me on. And then I also had these um, scrapbook paper. But I ended up going with this because it was white. And, I, and so that is another option for you when you're looking for collage papers. You know, you want to keep that in mind. And again, it's all personal preference. So, and because I used the envelopes, which were recycled, I felt like I had done my duty in recycling uh, because all the background paper is recycled. So now it's ready. I'm ready to paint, guys. So to do that, I am going to first just shade the background and the... Um, behind everything to get it to pop and so we can see what we're working with and then I'm just going to use washes probably to create kind of um, pretty colorful background all right so kiwis with me you ready Kay I have my palette paper which I like I have paint um, I mean I have glue and paint all over me um, I have my angle brush which is what I use to float. And floating is a technique that I use. You guys that watch my videos are very aware. I have my water bucket, and I'm going to start with Payne's Gray, which is my go-to for blue background shading. And then I have um, Black Green is what I'm going to use for the grass, which it may be a little dark, but I like it dark. So, oh, that's a pencil. I'm going to take my brush. get some wetness in there and I'm gonna blot it on a paper towel and let the water the main water come out but my bristles are wet like I am I'm getting wetness so you want to load your brush with water blot and corner load it into the paint you just need a little bit of paint on the corner of your brush and you're gonna blend it into the brush when I used to be a decorative painter you really wanted this to be nice because what you put what you got going here on your palette paper is pretty much what you're going to get on your piece okay i've already coated this by the way with mod podge collage podge actually i've been using this i think i got that at hobby lobby um so i've sealed the paper so that now i have a barrier between all that painty goodness and ink which is all permanent and fine and i'm, I'm going to be able to slick this along pretty nicely all right, and it is a mixed media piece, so I don't have to be perfect, um, and I can be a little more rough. You can also use a uh, mop brush to kind of tickle your floats if you uh, if you want them to move a little bit, which I have right here. 
And by that, I just mean, like, see, that looks graduated enough for me, but I could kind of pull the paint away a little bit if I didn't like it. I'm going to go around the outside edges. I'm going to go around um, all the images as well. So I'm going to stick this underneath my dragonfly. It's very dark because I am a heavy hand. Um, maybe I don't want it that dark, so I would probably go to, I might, I might go to a smaller brush because I, I just tend to put, I can load my brush. I mean, I kind of like it. It doesn't look bad. But I think if I have a smaller brush, I have more, can see, I don't know. I like it dark though. And when I'm doing this, all the bristles are on the surface, even though the darkest paint is just on the tip. I need the water and the to create the graduation of color. So from darkest to light to water on the end. And I just keep going right back to my runway there that I created on my palette paper to reload my brush because it's it's ready to go. I've already created that um, graduation on my palette paper. And I can be a little more sloppy when I do mixed media because the background is bumpy and textural. And um, it's still, I still get the, the look that I'm looking for. Um, you can do this with your pit pens as well and get the same look. You just smudge them, especially if you've already prepped the surface with um, either gel, matte medium, gel medium, any, any type of a slick surface. So now you're starting to be able to see my dragonfly. I'm going to go down around his tail. And he doesn't have too long. Now that looks a little choppy, so I'm just smoothing it out. And because I am um, proficient, right, I know how to flute. I be, I'm a little more critical of my work and I tweak it to my liking because I can. But if you're new to this, don't be afraid of it and it's not going to look like mine. But you should be able to um, accomplish a bit of a shaded feel um, in this way. So practice. Practice on palette paper and actually you can just practice right on your um, craft mat because it has a slickness to it that will work. So I'm um, again just sticking the corner of my brush, the darkest color, up against the piece and then just kind of pity patting it around. And I'm going to do this to all of the flowers just so we can see them on the background and all of a sudden the background becomes a background right remember well if you saw part one I I just say don't get caught up in the background being too busy or having too much going on because it is a background it's not the focal image and we're gonna cover it up so now we've gotten to the cover it up part. So look how much those three things are popping now, right? I need to reload. I'm, ran, I'm running out of water, and that's why I like a big brush, because I can go on and on and on and on with it. So it's, it's something that you will, the more you do it, you get a feel for it. And... Um, Because some people, when I've been in classes and people are floating and they're using a tiny brush, they're using like a, at least, oh, even under a half inch, I'm just like, you can't use that. You're going to get a line. There's nowhere for the paint to float across the bristles. You need a little bit of a bigger brush for you to get the, the science to work. <laughs> I don't know if it's science. Um... You know, and, and so I, I do believe that um, you have to understand what you're doing in order to get 
the result you're looking for, right? So let me just switch. I'm going to switch to the black green. I have to do, well, actually, I'm almost done. I may as well finish. I'll switch to my smaller flat, I mean, um, angle brush. And I like to use an angle brush. I'm yelling. I don't know why I'm yelling. So this is a, it's a number three. I think there's a number three on there, which is odd because generally these are um, quarter inch, half inch, stuff like that but it's much smaller. Look how short the bristles are. And I can get a float with this, but you're not going to be able to get it as wide and get the, all right, whatever. So let's just, I do the same thing. I corner load and I push. I have a little too much water, so I'm just going to blot again. And you don't want your bristles to split because then you know you don't have enough water on the brush that's too dry. The water will hold the um, bristles together. And I just, I don't feel like it's dark enough, so I had, I went in some more paint. But I'm able to get the, a pretty good result. And so I switch to a smaller brush when I am really trying not to go dark because, so I mean, it's, it's there. I mean, it's not bad. I think it's good. Hi, Kiwi. You want to come up on me? Hi. Nope, she's good. So that's basically that. I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna switch to the black green now, and we'll go under and around all these other things on the green. Now this might be too dark. I want to, I'm going to use my big brush. I just like it. I can, I can hold so much more paint. And I, it just, I don't have to reload as often. So I'm going to go do the same thing. But all the bristles are on the surface. I'll, I'll go in. I'll go in for you. Let's see if I can show you. I mean, it's hard to see at this angle, but what I mean by that is it's an angle brush, but I am putting all the bristles on the surface. So I'm not just up on the tip like that. You need the water, the paint, and that sunshine. Everything to be on the surface. And I tend to pick my brush up and pity pat it. Um, I don't know why, but it's just easier for me to, to kind of keep coaxing the paint around instead of just one, not even in the shot, instead of just one like pull. And I also go perpendicular to the, to what I'm trying to paint. So I keep a T. So my brush stays like that. But now we can see our, our focal images. And we're going to do some more floating on the piece as well. Um, but first we're just going to put some color down. Oh, I do want to go around the outside edge, but you know what? Something just makes me like it unframed at the moment. It's just, this is wet. Um, this is acrylic paint, and it is water-based. So that is why I am using water to um, you do this technique. There are people use uh, float medium, retarder, one of them is called, because when oil painters used to try to get this, um, result, it was easier to keep it, um, to slick it down a little, I think, or it, actually people use retarder to keep the paint wet longer, so maybe they didn't do it with oil paints, because acrylics dry way faster than oil paints, so I had that mixed up. I don't know why they use it, I've just never used it. I only, I've ever, only ever needed water to get the result. 
So I'm sure had I had I learned this technique with someone else who used it, maybe I would. Um, but I know that I have painted that way. You dress your brush in retarder. So instead of water, you just dip your paint, your brush in retarder first. So you're working with retarder. And then I think it has to do with what's left on the page. Because now that this is just water, um, it dries. It'll dry like water dries. But if you're using retarder, um, it'll stay wet longer. All right. So you get the point. Now, let's go back up. There it is. And these kind of look like clouds. Um, but let's see, what colors should I use for um, my critters? Maybe I'm going to go off because you know what I've been doing so well this time is I've been clearing my desk step by step. So um, you know what I could kind of do too? No, I don't need to. Um, we'll add all the details at the end because I was going to make a little grass like hill that he's on and grass sprigles and but I do want to just, I don't, I want to keep it simple because I know I, I get very elaborate. Let's see if I can see where these would look nice. It's the little things that make life big. Do we like it there? Because I'm going to have to shade around it too. Um, I think I kind of like it at the top. It's the little things that make life big. Should I just put it right at the top? Dang it, I wish I would have thought of that before I placed everything. Could put a little bit here. I could go over it. There's enough room here. I think I'm going to put it around there somewhere. Mm. Alright, I'm going to gather up some paint colors to paint everything with okay and then we're just going to use washes I could float it all on but I think I want the idea is when you paint it you actually want the image to show through so you you don't want to just erase all the lines behind everything those music notes like why would I use that paper if I didn't want it to show so I want to do washes and that's not generally my, <laughs> my I'm a heavy hand I, I repeat myself but that just means that I tend to, I'm looking for one other ladybug. I had another ladybug. Because I kind of want to use this ladybug. She's going to be sitting on a leaf. So let me, you know what, let me use, I'm going to use some black green. I don't know if I want to use black green. And I'm going to show you a stroke leaf. I do want to use black green. And I think this will be it. Okay. So... We're going to do a double load. So I'm, I have some citron green and some black green. And I'm going to take, I like to use a filbert, but I don't always have one that's in good enough shape. Hey, look. Ooh, this is a perfect one. This is a size 6 filbert. And a filbert is a brush that basically is like a hand. It's cut like your hand. It's not a, a flat brush like, you know, flat, blunt cut. It has this so I'm going to go into some water, a little bit of water, blot, I'm going to side load dark green on one side, flip it around, and side load so I have a double loaded brush. And then you work the paint into the bristles, flip it over, and I'm going to load again. I'm going to go back, same side, again, and work it into the brush. So now when I stroke my leaf on there, it's going to be two-tone. So you get your shading and your, um, I'm going to put a couple right here. Your shading and your highlighting at the same time. So uh, this is a tricky move too, but you know. I'm going to put down and pick up. It's kind of dark. And again, I want to reload right in that runway where I, what is with this birdie? It's kind of light because generally um, you would, you could base coat, but I don't want to. I just want to do one stroke leaves and then maybe I'll outline them. Again, it's personal preference, guys. You can just paint on some leaves. You can stamp on leaves. Like I actually have stamps that I was thinking of using too. 
Um, but I thought I kind of haven't done these in a while. Just going over that again. And I'm using these white areas so that they, they might show up a little better. And I'm pointing them in the direction of away from the flower. So like here, because I'll attach it to the flower like there's a spriggle. I always call them spriggles coming off. So I'll put a couple here coming off that one. And these will show up better when I do line work. So see, it always starts to get way more elaborate. And I'm trying to not make the video so long, but it's impossible. Because fun takes time. If I'm going to have fun, why rush it? Right? Am I right? I am right. But I can go on and on and on. So one strokes are a very um, quick way to achieve a little extra something something. Mm-hmm. I love that that little piece of map is showing. See, that's why I may not um, go around the edge because I really like that. It's super cute. I can always add more, but I can also just get carried away. But I like that. Especially up in the blue. Doesn't that two-tone look so cute? All right. So now we're going to paint our flowers. And I think I'm going to do the dragonfly um, wings with this. Oops, stuck my finger in it. I have this color that I love. It's called um, Halo Blue Gold. And I think I'll do, actually, I think I'll do his wings with purple. I don't know. I just, and then do his body with the halo blue gold and float with, all right, so here's the thing. And this is a sheer paper uh, paint. It's by Lemire, by Jacquard. And it's actually a fabric paint, I believe. Um, I don't know. I saw it on YouTube one time and, you know, thought I needed it. And, you know, I have, it is one of the things that I tend to use. So I'm very happy because I don't, I have so many things that I don't use. I don't even remember I have them. But this one, so this is a number one round. That's a little small. I, my go-to size is a three. Number three round is a really good one. But these are really beat up. Like, see how the, the tip, it's not coming together? You want it to be, come to a point. I can feel crud on here, or maybe I just have glue on my fingers. I have a lot of number threes, though, because it tends to be the size that I buy, so there's no doubt that I've crudded up a few of them. This is another number one. Uh, but I will... Ugh, I don't like this. That makes me sad when I see a brush like that. This is a number three round, but it doesn't... And um, all different brands are different sizes, just FYI. So I'm just going to go into, I have a water on my brush. I'm going into the lid. There's some color there. And I'm just going to put that out on my palette. And I'm going to paint his little body. And tail. It is such a gorgeous color. OMG. But I want to keep it sheer. But I love that. And I have a purple, but it's not as awesome. It's just called Pearl Violet. I don't tend to use this one as much. But um, let's see what this looks like. It's just purple, but it's metallic, right? These are light, light body metallic acrylic. Um, same brush. 
Can't find it. Oh, it's in the water. So I rinse it off. And let's see what this looks like. Because I don't really know if dragonfly wings are purple. They're not really, are they? You see them, they can be purple, blue, green. So I think the wings would be better with that color too. I'm just doing it and I'm going to say I don't really love that. I don't love it. So you know what happens when I don't love it? I take a wet wipe and I take it off. Because we have that um, coating under there. I don't want to rub too hard because um, all my shading from the outside could possibly come off. And I kind of got some purple, but that's okay. Having a little purple, like I might do purple. I was thinking of doing um, some scrolls. So let's, I'm going to just go with this purple for a minute. This isn't a good scrolly brush, but what I mean is like I might do something like that, like here, like he's um, like in the background. But I think I'm going to do the wings the same color. It's kind of boring how huh, to do the same color wing. What color is... I have this other color too. It's called Halo Pink Gold. So I'm just going to see what this looks like. These have like... It's a two-tone effect. And that's why I think I love them and keep going back to them. I don't know if that's in the shot. Definitely, it's a gorgeous color. Oh, MJ. But I still, I don't think it's the right color for the, I, I think the wings should be the halo blue gold. And maybe I'll put some purple on top of, um, why don't we do the snail shell this color? Oh, this is such a little brush. I gotta go to my bigger brush. That's what I think I'm gonna do, guys. I, and listen, this is, again, I repeat myself so much. Come on, Kay. Come on up. Come. Um, it's personal preference. Use what you have and what you love especially because that's what's going to make you happiest. And I have some pencil lines on there. Again, I would like this to be sheer because I really don't want to cover up. Which it, it isn't coming out as sheer as I'd hoped. So I'm going to add a little water to my brush and kind of pull on it a little bit. I have a heater going in here. In the winter, there's, I have four windows in this room and two doors. There's really not of, a not of, not a lot of, um, I was probably not in the shop, but come on. That's too cute. And you know, shells, a shell would have that kind of a, um, Sorry, I'm, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, I got to remember that I'm not in the shot. Sorry. I get really happy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take some of this purple and go over the body. And I'll have a purple body, and I'll do the wings with the blue-green. The halo blue-green, it's called. I'm, I'm thinking they have other halo colors so I have the pink gold the blue green um so they may have others as well and I just got what they had probably at Michael's or AC Moore wherever locally I don't know I might have even ordered these so don't look to me for your supply lists guys I just get what is is available generally and I mean yes I do order online too don't get me wrong but um I don't remember I don't pay attention. My life is so, uh, I don't pay attention to things. But see, that to me is just the wing. It's the dragonfly wing color. It has to be. It's too stinking pretty. But I am still trying to keep it super sheer.
So I've got some water in my brush. That's how I accomplished that. And um, seems to seems to be working out fine. Uh, a little too much water, maybe. Maybe it's too shiny, but, you know, dragonflies have that little iridescence to them, don't they? I'll tweak these, too. Don't worry. You know I got it. I like it. All right, so what color should we do our flowers? Like a maybe a really light pink. Maybe I have another... Uh, no, I have mostly, um, like metallic colors, not, um, in other words, they're gold, bronze, brass, silver, so, um, I don't have any other color colors. I think I'm just going to use my bubblegum pink. I love pink, and I wouldn't be happy if I had a project with no pink in it. So let's do a little bubble gum, and I'm gonna, um, I'll probably, maybe I'll use a, a shiny, um, see I gotta move some of these brushes, um, a shiny metallic or, um, what's it called, pearlescent pink to, um, so I'm trying to, and you can, if you want, the medium, that's what the mediums are for, like I see, there's a base, a tinting base that you use with the, um, the, the, what are they called? The media paints. And there's all types of other mediums. I just always use water. But if you need to thin your paint out, because that, then the thing is, I think adding water reduces the pigment. I think that's the reason that people like to use these mediums with their paints because you don't lose the gorgeous pigment that they have and they're highly pigmented that's the that's the lingo they use but I just use craft paint acrylic craft paint and it's for my own purposes and I don't get caught up in the science of paint and the reasons for things so if you do do your thing do you I'm going to do me, and uh, I think we're, we're all going to be happy that way, happier, but like if that has too much, you know, I want to be able to see through it, you can just tap it with your, but I really am enjoying trying to I'm going to go up because this is nothing fancy and I don't want you to not be in the shot. Um, trying to keep it light and just do washes. It's fun for me because I, I've always had to base coat everything and it saves a step because generally you base coat it in. So I would paint this in solid, opaque, and then come back and shade and highlight. But because it's mixed media, you can get away with whatever whatever you want goes and it looks gorge like that this pink color just makes me happy and I'm gonna shade it it's gonna look so amazing you will see we're gonna put a little um, center in there What color is a, a snail? He's kind of gray, right? But he could be pink, like a pinkish gray. I don't know. I think gray would be good. Like, I have a gray color. And I'm going out of the lines. Like, I'm getting some of this on the background. But because I'll probably um, be outlining everything, or most everything, adding details with a pen or a paintbrush. In the past, well, with decorative painting, you would always add details with a brush and paint. But now we have the, all these fancy schmancy things. I want to use them because I have them. How's that looking? 
very pink. Uh oh. All right, let me get my little snaily done. Uh, I was pretty sure I put some gray. I have a little paint spinner on my desk that I have just my go to colors, but gray isn't always on my list. So I'm going to have a look in here. Oh, I found it. Slate gray might look pretty. And then I have cadet gray. I think I might use the darker. Uh huh. And I have uh, Posca paint pens. I have all types of stuff. But I also have a ton of paint, like regular craft paint. So I tend to use it. And uh, I know how to use it. So that's why I'm, I'm ending up, after trying everything and buying everything, I've ended up going back to what I know best and including it in the creating my own style using what I know best, you know. And that's going to be the case. Whatever products you like best, you should use. Because you can probably get the best result from using them. Um, Alright, my centers of my flowers are going to be... I, I just think yellow would pop. So I'm going to do yellow. And I'm going to use... This is called opaque yellow, but this is called cadmium yellow. And I know cadmium is like a big name in true, um, I'm going to try the cad. It might come out more, I don't know. I don't know the difference. And then we're going to float to give that stuff all some, um, poisonality. And I was thinking of putting this little Ladybug. Oh, look, he's bigger than the leaves. I was going to put him on a leaf. Maybe I'll put him up here. One, two, three. I think I'm going to adhere that real quick. Um, ooh, I didn't cover up these paints. All right, I'll be right back, and we'll do that. All right, while that's drying, I stuck it right up here, and I'm glad. One, two, three. You're supposed to have these. I don't know. I'm going to use this brush. This is called, it's a stippler, but it's by a certain company and everything is always covered up on these. Um, I will try and figure out, oh here we go, this one might have, okay, Low Cornell DM Stippler, and I have several different sizes and it has this blue stripe, but what I'm going to do is double load this and put my centers in. So here's how I'm going to do that. I have some burnt sienna. I'm going to take half of the yellow and half of burnt sienna. And stippling is an up and down kind of pouncing. And I'm just going to go with my burnt sienna on the bottom. Oh boy, I haven't stippled in a while. Can you see that? So, again, you don't want to mix up your sides. Make sure you have yellow. So I'm going to go yellow on top, brown on the bottom, and just pounce it in there. And this is me using things I have and just playing. Okay, so it's not, I, I don't have to do this every time I paint a flower, but it's just, I'm, I'm having fun and I'm doing something I haven't done in a long time. And that's what creating is for me. It's trying new things always and playing. So I want you guys to, to see how I do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way or you should do it that way. It's just the way I'm trying to do it right now. That's all it is, keeping it simple. And look how easily I did that. They're done. Um, what else do I want to do? Got to add some details now, I think. My little uh, ladybug's probably dry, and I need to paint that red. 
I have true red and country red. I think I like the country red better. I need a little brush for this. Kiwi, what are you talking about? What are you saying? What? Do you want to go home? I thought you wanted to chill with me. And I could just put a wash over this. I think that's what I want to do. I'm just going to keep it really... I mean, obviously everything else is washy. I just didn't want to lose the um, dots. But I'll come back if I need to. Um, put the dots back in. I'm gonna blot it with a paper towel, and I think I'll get the I'll get enough to know it's a ladybug. See the spots. All right. Um, I'm going to use a color that I love called Mendicino. And I love chocolate cherry too and candy bar, but Mendicino is a poppin' pink red. It's called Mendicino Red, actually. And that's what I'm going to use to shade my flowers. I'm going to do it with a little angle brush. I'm going to use the smaller of the angle brushes for this. Oops, that's my... Because I'm going to go in... So right now I'm going to go on each petal of each flower. I'm loading my brush just like I do to float. It's an angle brush. And I'm going to just take each petal with the color up against the center. And I, I like the brush lines, the brush strokes in this case. So what I mean is, if it's if it looks choppy, it's okay because it's kind of almost giving the um, flower. Um, sorry, my I have. Um, I'm gonna just stick that over there. It gives the petal a little bit of definition and texture, right? So it also defines my center a little more. So that's what that looks like. I'm just going to reload a little bit. I don't think I needed to, but I don't know. I got distracted. So again, the color goes up against the center. And I turn the piece so that my brush is perpendicular, right? Isn't that what I mean to say? Like a T, like a T. You want the surface that you're coloring that way and the brush this way. So I actually turn the brush as I go, especially when you're doing a circle. This one's just a little light. So that's how I'm going to create um, depth, I guess, right? And But I'm really just adding the color to the base of the petal up against the center, and that way the tip, the edge of the petal should be highlighted. And look, my center got very unround there. But I can round it again. All right, so I'm going to do that to all my pet, my flowers, and then I'm going to take this aligner brush, which is like this. It's a ten slash zero, very fine brush, and I'm going to go into my black green and make little stems to attach the leaves to the flower so that they're just not hanging out there. And you can be as 
swirly and am I okay I just wanted to see if I was in the shot and my brush is splitting it's so sad I think mixed media is just really rougher on your tools than um, decorative painting and I haven't been as uh, particular when I clean my stuff either so it's my bad obviously when you do this line work you really want your paint thin and inky so I'm adding water to my brush and then creating a little inky wet puddle next to or you know of the black green I'm not just using paint straight from the bottle it won't uh, it would just be a big blob and you can make little swirly doodles well I'm gonna do I definitely want to do something as far as the dragonfly goes make some type of swirly are all my leaves attached? It looks to be. Um, some type of a, but then you could also just take the um, the color that we just floated around the leaf, uh, I'm sorry, the flower, and make that inky. And you can get really detailed and make little, so you're not going to see these as much if there's the writing on the paper, but it will show up on some petals for sure. my brushes are bad it's so nice when you have the right tools and, it, and you'll be more successful as well if you have a good brush you don't want to really do this with a beat up brush necessarily so they look much more lively right let's do something with our snail I feel like I want to give them little spots so I'm going to get that other gray I think it was a little darker that gray which one's darker no this one's darker and we'll put some spots in here they're not going to show up um let's just do the shell all right so to shade the shell i'm going to use the burnt sienna uh, it's a brown and i'm going to take my uh, I can see the lines through the paint so basically I want to shade I'm going to use my small angle brush and burnt sienna which is a brown and shade around So basically, I don't know, this is so shiny, it's hard to see. I'm holding the paper so that I can see the lines. And I don't know that this even... It'll work though. If I get it in the right place, if I can see where my lines are, and then I'm definitely going to outline. So I'll use some line work, but I can't see as well as I'd hope. We got a little curve going there. I'm going to bring it all the way down.
looks like a shell and I'll outline it um, I definitely need a like I don't really want to use Payne's gray I gotta find a dark gray and I oh graphite yeah I think graphite would be good to shade my little my little guy same brush and I'm gonna shade him under his chin and along the shell so here and here and then under his chin a little bit um, I think you could actually have a little um, antenna and let's do a little antenna kind of like not really dark enough and then he has a little mouth here a little smile and a little eyeball um these aren't dark enough because that little spot right there it's not popping Um, I'm going to use this to make little, like, spots. I'm copying this. I'm copying it off of that little, um, stamp. I'll show you. But I think it looks cute. A little extra detail. So this little stamp that I have... See, it has these little spots. Um, and then, like, you know what you do? Dip dots should really be done at the end, but you can just take your stylus and dip it in a nice puddle of paint and give them a little dip dot antlers. Antlers? Is that what? Antlers. He's got antlers. Anyway, we'll do that at the end. I have to do my dragonfly. What colors... You could also highlight this, so we could highlight the shell with, I just think it looks gorgeous. Oh, sorry. See, when I come out of the shot, it's not good. I could highlight the uh, top edge of the shell, too. Ooh, maybe in the white. Like, I have a, um, Sunny hears me talking. She's just like, I want to talk to you, Sarah. Sunshine, what are you talking about? I'm just darkening it up because I feel like it uh, needed it. I needed a little second coat of shading. See, that's a thing I loved about decorative painting, too. They would tell me what colors to use and all that stuff, so it was much easier to figure out what to do. Um, I don't know if I want to highlight that. I think it looks good the way it is. How does the grass look? Does the grass look like it needs something? Um... Man, it's looking cute. How am I going to finish my, uh, I think black green on the wings might be a good way to go. I'm just going to corner load and do black green along the bottom. And that way, when you use an opaque paint or, a, you know, a flat paint, the metallic really has a chance to shine because you can, it definitely pops from the back. 
and you just want to set that down too. So you should, oh, oh, really you should go on the bottom first because then I won't put my brush in it. <laughs> and up against the body. That helped though, didn't it? And then I want to do the body. Um, I think that Payne's Gray might do the trick. I might want to come in with some more Payne's Gray on my little um, snaily friend. Ooh, he's slimy, right? I might want to put some uh, this. This is my pearlescent white. Maybe I'll hit him. And he could have a pink cheek, too. That would be super cute. I get so... I just could go on and on and on. So I'm having fun. Haven't been on the treadmill yet. I gotta get on the treadmill. So let's give him a little pink cheek. That's too cute! Oh my god. You guys can't see it. Alright, let's see. Um, oh, I was back to my, my dragonfly. So we're going to shade his body now to separate those with like um okay i like it i'm gonna go in with the Payne's gray it's like a purpley blue and it's a dark color so i think it would look nice um hope so and if not we can take it off it's kind of drying up on my palette so i just had to pop a hole in it gets a crust on it and I'm just popping a hole. So let me do his little butt. And then I could make little sections on his tail too. But I don't know. Is that showing up? Um, You know what? Well, it'll be good when I do line work. I'm going to do line work. And then the eyes. Ooh, I think I'm going to use red for the eyes. And do them like a little... Uh, hmm. Ooh, what about... I don't know. Maybe... Are they red? That one doesn't look, this one looks good. It looks more oval. All right, I'll come in. This one looked oval. This one looks like a blob. All right, let's do it again. So straight and then a little circle. I didn't know what I was going for, so now I know. All right. But I like it, and I'll highlight it. Am I in the shot? Tell you using these metallics, it's so shiny. I can't even see what I'm doing. Alright. Oh boy, I like that. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Um and then I was gonna highlight. I'm gonna go down one side of his whole body with um I don't think this Payne's Gray is actually popping. Maybe black would look better. But I'll just do the Payne's Gray again until I see if I like it. I'm going to go down the bottom side, like down here. Just down half of his body. And maybe on the bottom of his head. Because I think you need the contrast of the bright shine of the metallic and then the, the calmness of the... Um, straight paint. And when I outline, it's going to be great. 
All right, I'm going to, this just looks so plain, but I think that might be where I put my words. It's the little things that make life big. I think that's where my words are going. So I'm going to adhere those. And isn't it super cute? OMG. All right, I'm going to go away and I'm going to finish my flowers. I'm going to do them the same way I did these. I'm going to adhere my words. And then it might be time for some line work. I might go around the whole thing to frame it in, but somehow I just like the brightness that comes in from the outside, so we'll see. All right, but everybody's looking good. Everybody's looking pretty done. And I think, you know, we're on, we're in the home stretch, so details are next. I'll be back. Okay, I've I've adhered. It's the little things that make life big. I actually went around all the flowers with a hit of the white pearl on the edges, on the outside edges. And I cuz I think everything really had metallic on it and I just thought, well, they don't and they needed it, so I did that. And then I'm just going around and I'm outlining with my Uniball Vision Pen. It's a waterproof, just regular. You can get these at Staples or any, pretty much Target probably. Um, but it's a waterproof pen. And I like it for mixed media. It's my go-to for mixed media and it's a fine point. So I've already outlined the bottom area. I'm going to do the Dragonfly. And I just don't want to come out of the shot because I will tend to do that when I'm focusing um, and so for the centers I just do like a, a little bumpy line and you know I'm because this is a, a piece of collage the paper almost just guides your hand around so it's super easy um, you know the edge of the paper of the flower so I'm and I mean I'm not being perfect trying to make it a middle a, a little more like painterly, liney looking. Um, I'm going to outline the leaves. I just like the way they look. They stand out better. What's your preference? And you don't even have to outline if you don't want. And then the last thing we have to do is our little dragonfly. So I gave him little sections there on his tail. I don't know how crazy about that I am. Um, I think I want to put swirls on though. That was my initial thought. And you know, when you get this far on a piece, you're like, oh boy, how much more does it need? And is it really, I don't want to ruin it now when I'm, you know, when I really like it. So, and this will come off if you feel like you over shot the line, you can take it off with your, with spit. <laughs> I'm going to go around his head and around his eyes. I painted those on. And then my little eyeball. I did with paint. And these are going to just, I don't know. I'm just going to. I, went, I did the ladybug and I outlined everything and I did go over the black to make it really dark. I made a little antenna on the on the ladybug too. Uh, I did antenna on the little guy here and I just did it in gray but then I had to go back and do it with black. It just didn't show up. Uh, what else did I do? I added a little bit of green along the horizon line because I didn't think it was popping enough. I had a lot, a little too much white. So now you can actually go in and make, I like to do these little grassy marks. Um, that's how I do them. Uh, anything you want. You can do little swirls like squigglies coming from, I don't know, that wasn't a very good one. I do these with paint usually and they're a lot freer. It's like I'm way more controlled but you can make little squiggly lines anything you want it is your piece and it just adds more interest I want to do something else to the wings and I I have my white Posca pen I kinda think I want to do something with white uh, well that 
that was kind of dark. Um, you could do little dip dotty things on top of each center. So it, it can start to really get carried away. And you know, I it, and then I almost I almost put another flower down here kind of peeking through because if you look at the it kind of looks like there needs to be a little pink over here. So it can get really cray cray. I'm going to try and put a tiny see what see what see. <clears throat> little spot of white. <coughs> what I really wanted to do, I'm going to try it with my Uniball Vision, I think it's called. Oh, the Signa Uniball. <coughs> but I don't usually have good luck with this on, on, um, <coughs> excuse me. Doesn't look bad. I'm just happy that it's showing up. Oh. That looks cute. And you can put like a white line as a shine. Little shine lines. He's too handsome. Our little, our little guy's too handsome down there. What else? I hope I didn't stick. Yeah, look, I stuck my hand in the dip dots here because the Poscas stay wet a little longer. But I stuck my hand right in that. I'm gonna write March 2018 right there. I'm gonna sign my name too. I'm just going to put Sarah over here. And I think it's done, guys. I was going to put, like, more swirls and stuff. And, I mean, I can still. It's so easy to just get carried away. Like, just put these little... See, now it doesn't want to work. Okay. Little lot, like, little sun sparkles, I guess they're called. Sparkles. I'll call them sparkles. But you don't need them. Uh, what do you think? I think we call it done. Let me come out. I don't know what happened. It's I looked up and it said task in progress. So hopefully you got that. I love it. I did outline just a couple. I did the top and bottom of the, it's the little things that make life big. And I love it. I think I love it. I think it's done. I will post a picture on Facebook. And enjoy guys. And thanks for watching.